What do you do when your world doesn't make sense anymore? Hey friends, it's Pastor Mike from Fellowship Church. Always enjoy connecting with you midweek. Hope you survived that big storm we had yesterday. Hope you're having a wonderful week. That question for you again, what do you do and how do you respond when your world doesn't make sense to you anymore? Friends, if you look at the world around you today, you would say, boy, it sure seems like there's a lot of fighting and some really significant wars taking place around the world. Wars in Ukraine, wars in the Middle East, Israel, Hamas, Hezbollah, all of that. Wars taking place in Africa, tribal battles, what's happening in Haiti. Sure looks like a lot of fighting. Well, the Bible was a place, the stories of the Bible, a lot of wars and a lot of battles taking place there as well. One of the most significant battles took place between Babylon and Israel. I say significant because of the ramifications, not significant because of the battle itself. It was the pro team beating up on the Pygmy League. It was a really short battle. Babylon, the bullies on the block, they overwhelmed Israel in no time, destroyed much of the nation, and carried the inhabitants of Israel, the Jewish people, off to live in Babylon. It was their way of making sure that there wasn't an uprising in Israel anymore. It's the way they handled things back then. They called it exiling someone. So for all these people of Israel who are living with the promises of God, and now they're living in Babylon, they don't understand the culture, they don't speak the language, they don't even know how to survive in that land, they're looking around saying, what do we do now? And God spoke to them through the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29. You would think that God would say through Jeremiah, okay, people, you don't belong there. That's not the land I've given to you. Yes, you lost in this battle. You picked on the wrong bully, but I want you to fight your way out of that city and make your way back to the land that I gave you. That would make a great story, wouldn't it? Except that that's not what happened. That's not even what God said. God said, settle in, build houses, Plant gardens. Of all the things for God to say, God says, plant gardens and eat the produce out of them. God said, get married, have children, raise your children, find spouses for your children, meaning you're going to live there for a while. God said, just settle in and make that your new home. That is the last thing those people wanted to hear. They wanted to believe that they were going home. Instead, God said, I know where you're living right now doesn't feel like home, but just settle in because you're going to be there for a while. And then God says, and I want you to pray. I want you to pray, not that your enemies would be defeated. That'd be an easy prayer. Instead, God says, I want you to pray for the peace and the prosperity of the land in which you're living. Now, now back up just a second. Every Jewish person living in Babylon lost somebody in that war. The Babylonians killed their fathers, their husbands, their brothers, their friends. They're all living in the aftermath of a devastating war. Okay, you can force me to live there, but now you actually want me to pray for the peace and the prosperity of these barbarian people that killed all my friends and family? God says, yes, I want you to pray for them because even when life doesn't make sense, even when you find yourself in very difficult situations, I want you to trust and believe that I'm still working. I won't be working on your calendar, your time schedule. I'm still working. Someday I'm gonna bring you back to where you want to be, but in the meantime, I want you to pray for the peace of the land in which you're living right now. Friends, if you look at the world around you today and think this world doesn't make sense, here's two things I'd like you to keep in mind. First of all, God is still working. He still keeps his promises. Our God hangs on to his promises all the time. God is still working out his plans and his purposes for all of us. And God says, you're living here. I want you to pray for the peace and the prosperity of the land in which you're living, friends. You continue to pray over this nation and all of our leaders, including the ones you disagree with. That's exactly the response that God wants the followers of Jesus to have in a land in which we would say, this doesn't always feel like my home anymore. When life doesn't make sense, God's people trust and God's people pray. May you trust and may you pray today and every day. Friends, I hope that passage makes sense to you. Again, it's Jeremiah 29. You can read that for yourselves. Hope God speaks to you the way he speaks to me in there. Hope you have a wonderful week, friends. Know that we love you and pray for you. Take good care of yourselves. God bless. Bye-bye.